Do right, all our right. classes there. Enjoy. Go to the tavern. <laughs> yes, <laughs> right. <laughs> nice dinners. <laughs> yeah, kind of yeah. Thing. All in one. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome to Behind the Pages. Elizabeth Searle is with us today to talk about her latest novel. Elizabeth is the author of five novels. She one of her novels is being made into a feature film. The novel she's here to talk about today is called We Got 'Em, and this is a novel that is set in the week of the uh, the bombing that occurred at the Boston Marathon almost four years ago now. Mm -hmm. uh, it is centered around a family who is in crisis, uh, not specifically because of the bombing, but it's all happening around the same time. So they're dealing with the unsafety at the time of, the, of what was occurring and then their own personal um, crisis. Welcome. That's right. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Uh, I'd like to have you tell us a little bit more about your novel. Um, mm -hmm. Who are your main characters and where are they when we first meet them? Well, my main characters are mm -hmm. a couple mm -hmm. who are expecting a baby, a long-awaited baby, mm -hmm. uh, Paul and Sarah, and they live in Belmont, mm -hmm. which is one of the communities that was on lockdown on yeah. the night of the Boston Marathon bomber manhunt. Mm -hmm. And most of the novel is set right on that night, mm -hmm. which happens to be their birth night. Uh, mm -hmm. Basically, Sarah goes into premature labor, mm -hmm. partly because of the tensions triggered in part by the marathon and in part by their stepson, her stepson, Paul's son, mm -hmm. who's a 19-year-old troubled young man. Mm -hmm. And the We Got Him title, for one thing, is the tweet that those of us in this area all remember yes. Mayor Tom Menino sent mm -hmm. when they finally captured the surviving suspect. Mm -hmm. And it also refers to the baby. They have a baby. We got him. Yeah. <laughs> you know, in the end, they do. Mm -hmm. And it also refers to, to me, you know, we as a society kind of have got a lot of troubled young men. And mm -hmm. one of the most disturbing aspects of the whole horrible marathon bombing situation to me was when it was revealed at the end, one of the suspects was a 19-year-old college student. Yeah. And I'm a mother of a son. And, you know, that mm -hmm. really hit me hard of how could mm -hmm. that happen? And yes. you know, I know there are going to be books and have been books written about that aspect. But yes. you know, I wanted mine to be about a family mm -hmm. reacting to you know being part of this tragedy going on. Mm -hmm. And in fact, um, as the book is opening, your main character Sarah is um, you know is is in that time period. I, I mean, there's a little back and forth, you know, mm -hmm. in terms of her remembering the day of, mm -hmm. you know, uh, but. She is feeling more unsafe than even other people who had been in Boston. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and, and this is due partly because of her stepson mm -hmm. uh, having shown up that day. Do you want to tell us a little bit about their relationship and oh, what yes. was going on as it opens? Mm -hmm. Yeah, she is feeling unsafe mm -hmm. because of him. He's a troubled kid. Mm -hmm. He was raised by his mother, who's mentally unstable, in mm -hmm. Ohio. And um, his father, Paul, although he wanted to have a relationship with him, has not really had the kind of relationship where you know the kid every day. Mm -hmm. He has come and visited several times a year. So to the stepmother, Sarah, mm -hmm. in a sense, even though she's known him on and off through his life, he's a, almost like a stranger in some ways. He has recently sort of dropped off the radar screen. Mm -hmm. And he's trying in every way he can to disrupt things. He's jealous of the new little family that yeah. Paul and Sarah are trying to make. Mm -hmm. And he has a whole mess of feelings about Sarah, including a sort of forbidden attraction to her mm -hmm. that has you know, disturbed her and worried her. And mm -hmm. she has handled it by kind of putting it under the rug, not wanting yeah. anyone to or know about saying, it. You must have meant that as a joke. Yes, you know? exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, pretending that mm -hmm. it's, yeah, that it's something mm -hmm. less serious than what it is. And yeah. so he shows up suddenly out of the blue the mm -hmm. week that the bombing has happened, Sarah's already very unsettled because she was down the route, didn't witness the bombings, mm -hmm. but was there and yeah. had a frightening experience. And so she's, you know, already very rattled. And, mm -hmm. you know, also she's pregnant. And, and to me, one reason I wanted to write this combination of strange combination of babies and bombs yeah. really is, mm -hmm. you know, when I was pregnant, an overwhelming feeling to me was just being terrified that something would happen that I 
slip and fall, that I'd be in yeah. a car accident, mm -hmm. you know, anything. You know, you just have such an overwhelming sense of wanting to protect that baby. Yes. And I was, um, I've told some of my students, one of my inspirations also was, you know, to me, the most frightening movie <laughs> ever is Rosemary's Baby. You know, <laughs> it's frightening in so many ways, but yes. beyond just that she's having Satan's baby, right. there's just these terrifying scenes of her walking in front of the New York City traffic or standing yeah. in a phone booth, you know, besieged by all sorts of things. And so mm -hmm. that had frightened me so much. My mother found that movie so frightening, she didn't want us to watch it, you know, which of course made it. Yeah, <laughs> for of course, you had it. <laughs> but yeah. somehow I wanted to write about that aspect of pregnancy. Mm -hmm. And one yeah. this horrible thing happened right back basically in our backyard yeah. you know because we were near Watertown my son went to school in Watertown mm. the big firefight that took yes. place there is a part of my novel mm -hmm. so these things kind of converged in my little writerly mind yes. <laughs> I couldn't stop thinking about them mm -hmm. and and when uh, Sarah's stepson PJ uh, mm -hmm. shows up Sarah is also feeling not confident that she's safe from him. Either. Oh no, not at all. Yeah. No, he is drawn to mm -hmm. weaponry. He has told mm -hmm. lies about himself being a spy. Mm -hmm. You know, I make reference to some of the crazy things he's talked about having in his lunch glue sandwiches, you know, mm. something he had read in a spy novel. Yeah. And he also was involved in an incident that I refer to as the cow tongue incident. <laughs> right. you know, there's some sort of um, dark humor throughout this book. And, yeah. you know, obviously I'm someone who watches too much news. I <laughs> watch the news a lot. My father was a total news junkie. Uh, okay. And I copy down, of course, like all writers, these oddball ones that occur. Yeah. And in Arlington, Massachusetts, my home, there was an incident at a graveyard where uh, some oh. graves were, you know, I guess vandalized and uh -huh. the police found some white powder substance that was unidentified and a cow tongue, you know, that had come from a deli that oh. was there. <laughs> and, you know, it's one of those things you just wonder, what on earth was the story on that? Yes. And so that is a part of his mm -hmm. past, PJ's past, is that he yeah. got a minor arrest yeah. being involved in this incident that later in the book I do explain, but it's very mysterious, of course, to yes. his parents, his mother, his stepmother, and everybody. Yes, <laughs> yeah. yes. Um, his his um, biological mom, mm -hmm. you, as you said, was, is, had some mental instability. Mm -hmm. um, does he? You know, that's a good question. Mm -hmm. I actually think in the end, mm -hmm. I wanted him to be on the edge, like yeah. a kid who could go either way. Yes. And which is what you think about when you wonder how on earth could something happen where a kid becomes such a criminal, yes. you know. Um, mm -hmm. And um, with PJ, I would say no, he's not mentally unstable exactly. Mm -hmm. He's very needy. Yes. He's had, he has huge issues with his father that will never be totally resolved. Mm -hmm. And he pushes, pushes, pushes to the limit. That's just his personality. Mm. Um, but I would add, you know, for people looking to the book, is it going to be, you know, completely dark? I would say at the end there's various forms of hopefulness, and one of them is mm -hmm. that PJ, in going through this ordeal, he goes through that night because he does wind up in a police car, sort of mm -hmm. under, you know, yeah. under suspicion, and he's just someone who already admires military people, police, that mm -hmm. was a part of his personality. and. That kind of kicks in. He he experiences something there that mm -hmm. winds up in a way being a positive thing for him. That it shows him a path. Mm -hmm. You know, my belief with young people is, and I work with students. You know, college students. Uh -huh. You know, you try to find you know what they're good at, what they like. Yes. And urge them in a direction where they mm -hmm. could use that. You know, yes. and I think so much, often they have creative, in a way, impulses mm -hmm. that are destructive. Yeah. You know, so he winds up just being all over the place mm -hmm. that night, kind of acting out in the most major ways you can imagine. And, yeah. Um, but by the end, I do think he's in a mm -hmm. little bit better direction, kind of taking responsibility for some things. Yeah. Yeah, I would say too. You know, there there were a lot of parallels between mm -hmm. him and the bomber, not mm -hmm. just because they physically yes, look physically. alike, but I mean, mm -hmm. they're, they're both of similar age, and mm -hmm. they're both on that cusp. Now, the the bomber who isn't really featured, mm -hmm. you know, that yes. in the novel He's except in, the in, in passing, mm -hmm. but we know um, from from what happened was somebody who might have just as easily mm -hmm. also taken another path. He was well, disturbed, you wish, but, yeah. you know, yeah. That's very it's puzzling and, and yeah. you know, horrible. And mm -hmm. I have in my research talked to not people who knew him directly, but mm -hmm. some people who knew people who did. And, mm -hmm. you know, so many of those people are completely flabbergasted. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's tragic. I You know, yeah. and you look at, 
well, all sorts of things, but the tweet messages that he sent right after the bombing, mm -hmm. which seems sort of sociopathic. Yeah. Uh, you know, you wish in a way the older brother had survived, if only so he could be grilled and we could find out more yeah. how this happened. Right. I'm sure, you know, young people always look to the older ones, but mm -hmm. yeah, it's a mystery yeah. and it's disturbing. And of course, mm -hmm. you know, I reference some other disturbing things that stick out to parents. I mean, I yeah. reference the Sandy Hook shooting and, mm -hmm. you know, anytime that someone that age goes off the rails and, yes. you know, Paul, the father in my book, worries mm -hmm. explicitly because his son has been arrested. There's a yeah. knife that occurs. Mm -hmm. He has a knife that he sometimes brandishes and, yeah. um, you know, all that is scary. And, and, and that is an age group where they can go off in a direction that they wouldn't if they were a little bit older. Mm -hmm. You know, the impulse control isn't there. Oh, totally, the yeah. The suggestibility, mm -hmm. the, you know, naivete in a way, mm -hmm. you know, not understanding the consequences of oh, actions. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's really not that well established even mm -hmm. at that age yet. Um, yeah. And that, that's what yes. I was thinking. You know, mm -hmm. he actually could just as well have, he wasn't, but he could mm -hmm. just as well have been the bomber because they were both sort of on that same edge. Yeah, if he had gone way over, yeah. yeah and I'm, you yeah. know, I'm with teenagers a lot. I have a teenager, mm -hmm. I drive a teenage carpool, I, uh -huh. you know, involved in the school. And, yeah. you know, I love, you know, teenage boys are the best. I think they're <laughs> great. But yes, all those things, yeah. you know, they're, they're very impulsive mm -hmm. and just driven mm -hmm. by so much that's going on in their yeah. bodies. And, you know, so I, my heart is with this character, but he yeah. definitely poses a kind of threat to the, mm -hmm. uh, the whole family and himself. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Sarah uh, thinks back to the day of the bombing mm -hmm. um, when she was actually five or six miles mm -hmm. from the mm -hmm. finish line. Uh, uh, so from her perspective, wh what happened that day that made her know something was wrong? kind of sitting in a chair and well you know I yeah. again did research I got yeah. to talk to uh, the chief of police in Revere who was involved <laughs> in a lot of these things and you know one of the things was people further down the route didn't know at first what was going on yes, but right. they started seeing people coming back and that was an image that stuck in my mind I mean mm -hmm. you're at a race and the the most illogical thing starts happening yes. people are going in the wrong direction mm -hmm. and people of course are on their cell phones and you know mm -hmm. hearing different rumors I remember hearing people say there was a rumor that a, a manhole had exploded, a manhole cover. Mm -hmm. wow. And then um, someone remembered, you know, I looked up some of these memories that people had mm -hmm. hearing someone saying, this isn't my blood, you know, mm -hmm. that there was blood on them, but it wasn't their blood. Uh -huh. All these sort of confusing things yeah. happening. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I cover the moments when, you know, she doesn't really know what is happening yet. And mm -hmm. I kind of flashed back. I wasn't at the marathon myself, but I flashed back in, as a writer to an incident I experienced just at the Copley uh, subway stop once I was pregnant and mm -hmm. I was on an escalator and it malfunctioned and stopped going up. Uh -huh. Everybody started falling all around me oh. and I found myself saying, I'm pregnant, I'm pregnant, you know, as if that's yes. going to help right. anything. <laughs> but I, she does that. She yes. says, I'm pregnant, you know, like sort of this can't be happening. Yeah. So that's, you know, her experience of it. Of course, mm -hmm. people who were closer in, who knows, uh, that would be just um, the, the most terrible. But, yeah. you know, I think everyone, you know, even those just witnessing it from TV, mm -hmm. it's horrifying when this kind of thing is happening, you know, nearby you. And especially yes. to me, the Watertown firefight, because yeah. my son went to school in Watertown. We mm -hmm. used to do things at the um, Arsenal Center for the Arts, which was mm -hmm. right there. It was grazed by bullets. You know, yeah. the idea of this firefight happening. And we knew people in that neighborhood, you know, mm -hmm. who had armed, you know, people come to the door and want to search the house and yes. it's, it really brings it home. What a dangerous yeah. world for, we live for in. For all of us here in the Boston area, mm -hmm. I think there's yeah. almost no one without a story similar That's right. to that, you know, mm -hmm. um, might not have been there, but you mm -hmm. know, I know someone whose son was a police officer mm -hmm. on the scene, oh you know, I mean, you know, yeah, mm -hmm. you just, it, it's just something that mm -hmm. for all of us in this area will have something concrete maybe we again we weren't all there yes. at the finish line but we well that's what I found giving yeah. readings we mm -hmm. were talking a little before the show and you know when mm -hmm. I give readings from this people in the audience want to share when I you know mm -hmm. invite 
Yeah. You know, what were, how many of you were on lockdown, I mm -hmm. ask? And, you know, some people want to say that, especially in a way people who, it's not that they were there, they had some big story to tell, but, yeah. you know, just talking to someone who was just so panicked, all she had was her computer, you yeah. know, trying to reach people, you know, mm -hmm. uh, people had different experiences of it, but, you know, the yeah. shared sense of, oh my gosh, you yeah. know, I remember okay. looking at the TV, the tanks rolling through Watertown, to <laughs> me it was like Blade Runner, that was what I thought, I've always oh, thought yeah. Blade Runner was a very prophetic film, uh -huh. <laughs> I felt like that was coming to life you know this was mm -hmm. the, the world was you know uh, yeah yeah upside down so right exactly yeah yeah I know it was a very bizarre uh, mm -hmm. scary yes. time yeah mm -hmm. yeah um, uh, Sarah's last contact with PJ um, prior to that had been the summer before when mm -hmm. something inappropriate happened mm -hmm. you know we, we right. you know we don't know till later in the novel mm -hmm. exactly what happened but we mm -hmm. know something inappropriate happened that both of them have been upset about mm -hmm. and, and reacting to their feelings about it in mm -hmm. different ways. Uh, what's PJ's way? Well, PJ, <laughs> you know, he, I think, acted on impulse there mm -hmm. and has this instance where, in a way, combining his mother lust, I would say, in, in the sense that, like, ever since as a little boy, he's longed for a mother. Mm -hmm. And Sarah, mm -hmm. back when he was a little boy, you know, she and Paul had waited a long time to have a baby, mm -hmm. were trying to have a baby, and she had wanted a baby for a mm -hmm. long time. And so she, as a young stepmother, was just showering PJ with attention whenever mm -hmm. he was there. And I think, you know, she later goes over her own reactions and the things that she has done and realizes she's made a lot of mistakes, mm -hmm. you know, not meaning to. Right. But from his point of view, this was the one person who was going to give him what he's wanted, you know, for so mm -hmm. long as a mother, and yeah. it gets mixed up in his mind. He, he definitely is very jealous of the idea of her becoming pregnant mm -hmm. and kind of plays with that. He's someone who plays with the power of just saying things, you know, yeah. saying shocking things, and he does that on the birth night, too. Yeah. And so I think his reaction is he's, he's always pushing, 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 and he yeah. knows he's pushed too far. Mm -hmm. And he runs away after that day because he's yeah. terrified that his father will find out. Mm -hmm. He doesn't know what Sarah's going to do. Mm -hmm. You know, so he really kind of goes mm -hmm. off on his own in a way and yeah. then gets in trouble in another way. So, you know. He does. But he doesn't completely leave her alone, either. No, no, sends he doesn't. Sends her a yeah. card, a, a birthday yes. card. Yes, yeah. he sends yeah these uh, cards that are written almost like poems mm -hmm. with a edgy almost threatening you mm -hmm. know tone to them and this is one of the many things that Sarah handles badly she realizes yeah. later mm -hmm. but she chooses to act like and this is something that interests me as a writer yeah. is how things can be so misinterpreted or how one little mm -hmm. thing like a card you mm -hmm. know with explosive language on it, mm -hmm. you know, she chooses to act like, oh, you're writing song lyrics. You know, these are yeah. lyrics to a disturbing mm -hmm. punk rock song, kind of, is how she yeah. acts, mm -hmm. which is really the wrong way to act. She knows that's not true. Yeah. And I think her reacting that way hurts PJ a lot. Mm -hmm. And so it just sort of ratchets up mm -hmm. things even more. And so they're struggling with this whole relationship, and mm -hmm. Paul, the father, is kind of oblivious to what's happened. So that's yeah. their dynamic as a family, and they're playing out their own little drama. Everything yeah. comes to a head, you know, yes. <laughs> with them as well as with the, the story that's happening behind them, the big mm -hmm. story of the, you know, the marathon. Exactly, yeah, yeah. In fact, as a, 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 as a character, this is consistent with Sarah because the, this idea of, I'm just going to pretend it's not happening mm -hmm. and then it won't yes, be. Exactly. You know? mm -hmm. I mean, she does that with her premature labor, you yes. know, she mm -hmm. starts That's right. having <laughs> some symptoms that yeah. are very concerning, yeah. and anyone else might call their obstetrician at mm -hmm. that time. It, she, I mean, she didn't wait a long time, but yeah. she waited, it, yeah. you know, yeah. and then, you know, maybe beyond the point where something could have been done to stop it. Oh, you know, exactly, you know, yeah, yes, but no, that's her. It's that sort of, I'm mm -hmm. going to just pretend this isn't happening, therefore yes. it won't be. And, yes, um, yes, yeah. I'm glad you see that. Yes, she does yeah. that all through, <laughs> and, you know, it doesn't work. You yes. know? She yeah. starts trying to, you know, deny yeah. um, all sorts of disturbing things. She really, yeah. really wants to have this baby and have yes. it be, you know, this perfect mm -hmm. birth, and, you know, yes. she hasn't had a chance to finish her natural birthing classes, so she has no idea. Yes. And, you know, my own birth experience, I had four 14 hours of labor with no drugs, kind uh -huh. of in a way accidentally had a, a natural birth. I mean, I yeah. just decided once I got there I was going to do it. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, 
I can relate to, you know, some people want to plan it down to the yes. second. And I remember asking uh -huh. a experienced mom I knew before I had my baby, what did she wish she had known before going into the birth experience? Mm -hmm. And she said she wished she had understood how many things can go wrong just in a normal birth. Yeah. I mean, we basically had a normal birth, but yeah. to us it seemed like, oh my God, you know, for a minute, uh, yeah. you know, the baby's turned around or all these different things happened. Yeah. So, you know, I think in fiction sometimes you turn up the dials. I yes. mean, I definitely right. took some of the things that happened in my uh -huh. labor and just turn them way up because for one yeah. thing it's a premature birth and yes. you know there's all these other everything. factors. Yes, yes. yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Exactly. Yes. Um, so uh, uh, Paul tells Sarah that uh, he needs to uh, he, uh, PJ is missing. I mean, because mm -hmm. again, the book kind of does a, a little bit of back, you know, yes. um, you know, back and forth. Uh, uh, Paul tells Sarah that he needs to find PJ because at that point he's missing mm -hmm. and um, uh, and and protect him because he's let him down before. Oh yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What does he mean by that? Well, he feels badly. He, in mm -hmm. his own way, he's not exactly like Sarah where she sweeps things under the carpet. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, he had never planned to have this baby, you know, mm -hmm. the, the mother turned out to be someone he couldn't handle at all, mm -hmm. you know, that marriage didn't even last, you know, till the birth. Mm -hmm. And so he kind of took the easy way out. He was also burdened, in a sense, with, you know, troubled parents of his own. He had to yeah. sort of take care of his mother, his father, and, you know, the situation arose where the natural mother of PJ was living with the grandmother, who's the one person, in a sense, that PJ was able to count on. Yeah. So she's depicted, she's kind of a stern, you know, old world sort of person, but yeah. she was consistent. So Paul mm -hmm. knew that. It's not like he was leaving PJ completely oh, yeah. on his own with the mother. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he took that way out. Mm -hmm. And I think his way of trying to deal with life before he met Sarah was to be very closed down, like mm -hmm. very guarded. And yeah to sort of feel like he himself wasn't, you know, fit to do these things, to be a father or a husband. Mm -hmm. And Sarah, in her own way, one of the moments I sometimes read at readings, and I remember someone telling me, oh, that was my labor, that's what I felt in my labor, even though their labor was totally different, yeah. is when Sarah says, you know, we can't do this, you know, <laughs> why did we ever think we could do this? Yeah. Like, we're totally screwing up and the baby's <laughs> not even doing yet. And so, you know, they are in a sense, but everyone is, you know, there's yeah. never a good time, it's just, you know, there's never a good time to decide, yes, I'm ready to be a parent in a sense. Yeah. So, you know, those were feelings I can relate to, I think a lot mm. of people can, and that, um, you know, I kind of, in a way, had fun with that aspect of yes. it, because I think, you know, the, mm -hmm. uh, some of it is, um, you know, just the human comedy. You all all feel that, oh, and yes, you can't believe definitely. it. You're being given this person, and then they're really going to take you out of the hospital. You know? Well, I did want this after all, didn't I? <laughs> right. That's right. right. Oh, it's yeah, very right. overwhelming. So. Right. Yeah. And yeah. yeah. And that's not at all uncommon, by the way, for somebody to, you know, I mean, she waited, uh, what? Like 13 years oh, to have yes. that baby. Mm -hmm. I mean, with mm -hmm. the fertility treatments and oh, everything, yes. and all of a sudden the baby's coming. It's like, oh, I. I yeah, yeah, I'm not sure I we wanted can this, do this. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 They have had, you know, their, I play with the different meanings of things, but they yeah. have had a marathon heading toward having this baby, mm -hmm. and you know, they've been yeah. married a long time and and have been waiting a long time for yeah. Sarah, waiting a long time, and it's mm -hmm. more her who had been pushing that agenda yeah. than Paul. So yeah. they have a lot of things to work out, which mm -hmm. interests me as a writer. I like to write, write about marriages. I've been married 33 years, so mm -hmm. I consider that one of my. You know, yeah. <laughs> expertise areas, I guess, and um, families, yes. women. Mm -hmm. I like to write about women's bodies. Oh, yes, yeah. Uh, you, you know, they both, at one point, um, before they leave the house, before the, it's, it's clear she's in premature labor, um, look at the TV, which everybody, you know, as we all know, <laughs> had their TVs on sort of nonstop, you know, during yeah. that time. Um, and they, they see, uh, uh, you know, the first posted um, mm -hmm. photos of yeah. the suspected bombers and realize one of the two looks a lot like their stepson. Well, what interested me about those photos, which mm -hmm. I remember well seeing on TV, as you remember, as people here remember, they were very blurry. I mean, at first they got digitally enhanced, you know, yeah. kind of as the night went yeah. on. But these shots of these two people at the finish line wearing mm -hmm. the baseball caps, yeah. one of them, you know, to me right away looked young. You know, mm -hmm. he was blurry, but he had a backpack on, yeah. the dark hair, you mm -hmm. know, longish hair, yeah. the baseball cap. And, you know, my thought was, oh, my goodness, you know, that first of all, I thought that could be any guy. And, you know, I thought to sure. myself, I wonder how many young guys are going to be kind of pulled over tonight yeah. because they're, the pictures are so, you know, they could be anyone. Mm -hmm. And I think I, I know that 
many, many, um, you know, calls started coming in mm -hmm. where obviously yes. there were a lot of people who thought this could be, in uh -huh. fact, I have Paul and Sarah in a terrible moment, you know, they finally see the photos together yes. and they both have the thought, oh my God, that couldn't be PJ, you know. Right. The, of course, they don't tell each other that, <laughs> yeah, do they? They have a, they a little have communication own problem because Sarah chokes yeah. on her food that she's yes, eating. Right. She's so shocked. So, yes, they have some mm -hmm. bad, they, in a way, uh, all the most terrible, you know, mm -hmm. things that could happen almost on a birth night, except, of course, they get the baby, but, yeah. you know, fears of the medical thing and, you know, mm -hmm. the family seeming to fall apart and, you know, all these yes. things. So they're, the dials are turned up. Yeah, trying to, you know, sort of go in many directions. Where is he? Is he safe? You know, are we safe from him? <laughs> yes, yes, you know, exactly. Both of those things, sure. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, is it on the way to the hospital, Sarah sort of recalls that uh, that earlier interaction that she had with PJ when mm -hmm. he kind of showed up at the door. Um, he was there any way of interpreting some of the things he was saying and doing that afternoon as normal? Well, you know, she's trying to. She would mm -hmm. like to see it as normal. She'd like to think he's kidding in a dark yeah. way mm -hmm. and that he's being provocative but mm -hmm. you know they have a history another of her you know kind of problems with him is she would always be almost like his playmate you know in mm -hmm. her eagerness to befriend him and yeah. you know to be the beloved stepmom mm -hmm. you know that was their early relationship was very playful yeah. and so she tries to interpret things he says as being twisted mm -hmm. humor and, you know, it's not that she's dumb. She does sense, obviously, she senses that he is upset, but she doesn't know what to do, you know. And she's so mm -hmm. fixated on the baby yeah. and really doesn't welcome the fact that he's suddenly back in the mm -hmm. picture, mm -hmm. you know. And she feels bad about that, too. She feels, yeah. she, she knows she's failing him. A lot of people are, in a sense, mm -hmm. failing him. The, his grandmother yells on the phone to the father, you have lost him. You know, yeah. she's literally, he has lost him. The father doesn't have any idea where he is at that moment. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I think those are, you know, they are mm -hmm. not handling him well, and he mm -hmm. knows that, and he pushes, pushes, pushes. I always have a character, yeah. I, in all of my fiction, I like to have characters who are loose cannons rolling yeah. around the deck, yeah. you know? We don't know what direction <laughs> yes, they're going to do. we don't know what they're going to do. Yeah. And I want PJ to be that. He's very unpredictable. Mm -hmm. And he is there to disrupt. That's one of his purposes. He mm -hmm. really does not want everything to go perfectly for this little family. Although once mm -hmm. he kind of almost gets his wish, mm -hmm. once the baby is actually there and he's actually looking at this poor little yeah. baby, mm -hmm. he has a, you know, bad feelings too. He certainly right. regrets that he might have played a role in upsetting mm -hmm. Sarah so much that she went into premature labor. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, which, of course, wasn't the case, but I think yeah, whenever yeah. something goes end, wrong, right. people, mm -hmm. uh, you know, if you write about this even in a fiction sense or in, a, a, you know, in a real life mm -hmm. sense, everybody feels that there's something they should have done. Oh, yes, and I think they get that tortured happens. by it. And, yeah. you know, yet another yeah. aspect is, you know, Paul and Sarah are a very uh, erotic couple, and they yeah. actually had been making love, and then they worry that that triggered it. They, <laughs> they worry that everything, that they've just done everything wrong. Yes. Right, exactly. Although they weren't told not to. I mean, no, they no, weren't really they weren't actually doing and, anything wrong. Yeah, so, yeah. So, yeah. And, and by the end, I do, you know, I mm -hmm. was always doing my research, and there is yeah. a medical explanation for what happened to her. But, yeah. you know, you always wonder. I mean, I, certainly people getting highly upset or frightened mm -hmm. has been known to trigger things. So that's yeah. just one of the many aspects of pregnancy that I think is so scary. Yeah. <laughs> that, yeah. You know, what if you get too upset someday and it right. hurts the baby? Exactly, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I mean, I do love that the novel deals with so many issues, you know, they, mm -hmm. you know, how was everybody feeling? Where were you at that moment? Mm -hmm. The idea of, you know, having a child, mm -hmm. uh, blended families, you know, mm -hmm. it, uh, it, so the book was quite fascinating. Uh, we are unfortunately out of time, <laughs> but I do want to thank you for being here. This has been a great discussion. Thank you. You have been watching Behind the Pages from the staff of 22 City View. I'm Diane Goshgarian. Yeah, that was great. Oh, uh, thank you. Yeah. The time it, flew by. Yeah, <laughs> I, I know it did, didn't it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I felt that way too. Um, yeah, I, I, you know, I do.